always doing it sunny side up. It's the hen. What up? What's going on, my friends? Hold up. Hold up. Let me grab this. Pop it over here for some better sound quality. Since I always forget to... This is a little too close for comfort, too, isn't it? Everything is everywhere, but that's all right. Uh, yeah, it's probably going to need to be moved again, but whatever. I guess... Because uh, we're doing... this. Is, we're trying something new, guys. We're trying something new. So I got this kind of half slapped together. Uh, oh, I guess we could do one of these, eh? Move me over a bit. Oh, it's on the side of the board, derp. Hold on. Hold on. Let's just... Let's, as you can tell, I didn't really plan ahead very well for this. <laughs> okay, hold on. Hold on. Let me move this. Let me, actually, you know what? Before I do that, I guess, let me just, let's share the live stream link so that other people who might be missing all the fiddling that I'm doing with the live stream can see it. And then we'll check and see if the sound's on so you guys can actually hear me. <laughs> all right. Oh. Okay. And now it says live E on YouTube. <laughs> it's still alive on YouTube. All right. Can you stump Hatcher? Can Hatcher stump himself with just the way he set up his stream is the real answer, is the real question. Oh, hold on. That's not any better, is it? Eh, mm. uh, you know what? We'll shrink it down for now. Whoop. There we go. There we go. That'll, <laughs> that'll that'll be good enough for this initial foray into stumping Hatcher. Can you turn me into a tree stump? So, first things first, let us do the greetings of the people who have arrived for the beginning of the stream here. Hold on. Let's end the poll. 82% of people are ready to stump me. Nice. Okay. So, who do we got in here? What up? Jess, Cthulhu, Gossett, Eng, Ralph, Juggalum, Hude, Ned, Stormtrooper, Blue, Austin, Al, Felon, Ultra, Maroon, Chester, Metazul, Lopez. Who else is in here? Ashmead, Clayton, I see more names, Grizzlebees, Blue Cats, DB, Astrid, Nerdvana, Graves, who else, who else, so many names, Kellaway, Gianna, Kensicky, Everyday, Shelton the Package Master, that did arrive, Randomness, Drunkle, Clark, Wrath, Goddard, Himrod, Tanhauser. I think I got everybody. I think I got everybody. Oh, hold on. There's also a super chat from Al that says, Some good voodoo, please. My cat has found a life. It sounds like you already got the good voodoo, bro. Congratulations. I'm glad your cat's all right, bro. That's good news. That's good news. Also, oh, that's a permanent marker. Don't use that on the board. Oh, <laughs> pretty close. Pretty close to screwing it up and writing the wrong thing on the board. Well, not writing the wrong thing, but using the wrong tool. Can you stump me into using the wrong marker? All right. There we go. Al, you're lord of the board. Okay. So, here's how it works. Here's how it works. You guys were doing stump hatcher. Alpha, Beta, Unlimited Edition. Those are all the same sets, essentially. There is, like, the, the most minute difference between them in that Alpha technically was missing some cards and whatever. But the idea is this. The idea goes like this. You guys can name cards, and I'm going to see if I remember, like, how much I can remember about the card. And if you can just stump me where I sit there going, I don't remember anything at all. This isn't a, I have a photographic memory I'm going to tell you exactly like the word-for-word -word wording on Unlimited or whatever. I'm going to talk about 
the concept of the card, what it does, maybe some of the flavor text, if it has flavor text, some of the cards I'm going to remember, some I don't. I am the final arbiter of whether I have been stumped. It's nice and easy. I'm the judge and the executioner. There won't be any executions, all right? So if I make mistakes, I will continue to live. Let's, let's be very clear about that. So yeah, what we'll do is you guys can suggest cards, whatever. I'll talk about them and then I'll put them into the search engine here so we can take a look at them on MTG Picks to confirm or disconfirm my correctionality. <laughs> yeah, my girl, how does fourth edition fit in? It doesn't. Listen, I'll tell you the sets that you can include. Here's how it works. Alpha, beta, unlimited. If it's not one of those, you can't do it. How does fourth edition fit in the same way a strawberry cake does? It fucking doesn't. It doesn't. All right? Oh, Austin starting out the gate with Lich. Oh, come on, man. Come on. You think I don't know about Lich, that hotness? Lich is a bizarre card. Four black mana, even has the old school black mana symbols where you can see a little line running down the bottom. They changed the black mana symbols uh, later on, right? But this Lich has the original. So it's four black. It shows a lich dude in kind of ratty clothing kind of hunched for like i think his clothing might even be blue his skin is yellowish and the ability works like this when lich comes out your life total drops to zero okay if you lose the lich you die um so if you lose the lich you die and any time that you would take damage you have to oh is it miller discard hmm i know it's when you gain life you draw cards and it's when you take damage you either have to discard or sacrifice a permanent and play i think and then once lich is gone you lose this is a good one you picked a good one because i like know most of it but i'm not 100 percent. i'm not 100 percent. i know i know life gain is drawing cards i know that for a fact but the real question is when you take the damage is it sacking permanence I mean, it couldn't just be discarding cards in your hand. That would make Lich too weak. But Lich was already really weak. You could disenchant it or whatever. I'm going to go with discard cards or sack permanence. All right? And then uh, you got to do that for each life point that you've taken. Let's see here. Lich. It's probably going to give me multiple options. Yeah, it is. Okay. So here it is. All right. Uh, let's see. No, we don't want that 30th and What? No, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, where do I see the other versions? Okay, is it showing it for you guys on the screen properly? Let's look at a nice, a nice version. There we go. Okay, so there we go. Four black mana. You can actually see the lines. Oh, Earth <laughs> Anto. Okay, Earth binds next. Super super chats take precedence. We'll do Earth bind next. So Lich, four black. You you lose all life. If you gain life later in the game, instead draw one card from your library for each life. For each point of damage you suffer, you must destroy one of your cards in play. Creatures destroyed this way can't be regenerated. You lose if this enchantment is destroyed. Or if you suffer a point of damage without sending a card to the graveyard. Okay, so I was partially right. You don't discard cards, you do sack permanence. With the casting cost, everything, this is not a stunt, clearly. This is a... This is a minorly not getting the card right. Doesn't count as stumped. Absolutely not. And I guess I should say, this is the set that will have the least likelihood of me getting stumped. Like, I feel like as we progress in time, I'm going to have fewer and fewer cards that I can, like, easily bang on nail. So I don't know how far. I'm assuming it's going to be up until the 2000s. So we'll do this set by set if it turns out being fun. This is obviously an experiment, right? But so far... I like this conceptually. So, Earthbind, I mean, come on, Anto, come on. Like Earthbind wasn't blazoned into my mind as a young lad, yo. And it's like, this is magic to restrain a fairy. The confusing thing about Earthbind is it's a one red casting cost enchantment, right? And the enchanted creature takes two damage and loses the ability to fly. But the creature that's depicted in the artwork is absolutely a creature with two or less toughness, for sure. Like, just because she's got thick haunches don't mean that uh, she's not like... This is all... All the fairies at the time in Magic only had, like, one toughness, right? For real, for real. Take a look at that. 
take a look at that bam what's up quentin hoover old school artwork right oops uh oh yeah sorry close that down so earthbind uh if cast on a flying creature it deals it removes flying creature it <laughs> removes the flying ability and does two damage to the creature uh that's it that's it all the rest of the text is just explaining like rule stuff where it's just like uh if another spell or effect later gives target creature flying earthbind does not affect this so that's a gimme that's a gimme Jess says, Wanderlust, Bigfoot's real peepness. You know what? For a second, bro, I was just like, why are you jabbering about Bigfoot? Why don't you mention a magic card? And then I'm like, wait, Wanderlust is a magic card. You're getting tricky. See, you're getting tricky. Lich is a big rare, right? Earthbind is one you know because it's like, hey, what's up, hot lady? Wanderlust is a garbage card. Who's going to remember one green and two for an enchant creature that says at the beginning of enchanted creatures upkeep its controller takes one damage and who's going to remember that it shows a dude in like a little green elfie adventuring hat with a wandering staff who's going to remember that some kind of magic historian perhaps and let's go and see what's going down what's the word for wanderlust oh things are looking real good it's looking real good let me just go ahead and pull the uh Let's just go ahead and pull up the beta edition, and oh, oh, would you look at that. Bang, on, bang, on, bang, on. That's a good one, though. You picked a random jank uncommon. You're, get, you're getting into the Trixie Hobbit stuff. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Uh, oh, Helm of Shot, Zook. You think you can get me with a one casting cost rare that is one and tap? Give a creature banding like I wasn't all about banding? The original version said mono artifact because it didn't have the tap symbol. So when you see me pull it up and you're thinking to yourself, yo, you said it's one and tap. I'm going to show you the beta before there was a tap symbol. But you tap it to use it because that's how mono artifacts work. And Helm of Shot, Zook is literally a crazy looking like whitish yellowish kind of helm with some reds and purples in there i'm pretty sure let's take a look let's take a look at the helm of shatsuk oh it's looking mighty good let's head on over to the beta version and look at that a mono artifact one mana you can give one creature the ability to band until end of turn yellow purple blue man man daddy's doing good daddy's doing good i'm very pleased with myself so far this is great <laughs> this guy knows his cardboard from 30 years ago that's right that's right uh astrid said artist of soul debbie digger currently in bio because of river song drew card 66 and alpha name that card cost two red listen man listen it's name it's name the card but you know what if you want to play this game, I don't know the artists of magic, but let's just take a wild flyer. Let's take a look at the artist. I'll play along with your nonsense. Although you're ruining cards for pre for future sets, like people are gonna in alliances and go Soul Davy Digger, which by the way is a two casting cost artifact. Pay two mana, take the top card of your graveyard, put it on the bottom of your library. The actual artwork shows this crazy machine that's like drilling down into the earth. So now that's out of the way. Let's take a look at Soul Devi Digger. Amy Weber. Amy Weber did a, a two red casting cost card in Alpha. How many two red casting cost cards are there even in Alpha? I mean, we've got Smoke, right? Did she do Smoke? Two red, enchantment. Each player can only untap one creature a turn. I'm going to roll with Smoke. I'm going to roll with Smoke. Oh, nope. That's Jesper my force. All right, well, fair enough. Doesn't matter. You broke the rules, so I don't feel bad. <laughs> that doesn't count. That doesn't count as stumping me because you didn't play by the rules. So there. That's what happens when you go outside the rules. You don't get the gratification of a genuine stump. Anto says, Comet Stellar Pup. Okay, thanks for the super chat. That's a dog. That's from Infinity. We're doing Alpha, Beta, and Unlimited. It's called Alpha Edition. Alpha Edition. Bino, Hidden Path. No! Stop picking green enchantments from the dark! Stop it, people! 
I'm not, you know what? I indulged one off, I indulged one going off the course, and now here's where we are. Everybody's doing it. That's my mistake. That's my mistake. I should not have indulged Astrid. I should have told him to say the name of the card. That's how we're doing it. That's how we're doing it. <laughs> None of this cryptic shit. So, so, Anto and Bino, you can choose cards from Alpha if you want, and I'll do those. But I'm not jumping all over the place. It's not Stump Hatcher from any card in Magic. That's easy. That's easy. I am, I'm having softballs lobbed to me. Softballs. Astrid, you choose Fork. All right, buddy. Two red. Who would have thought? You know what? I bet you the artist is Amy Weber. Fork copies target instant or interrupt spell. It happens at interrupt speed and it creates two meatball chocolate chip cookies. Let's take a look and see just how glorious and right I am and fork everybody who don't want to play by the rules. Rules exist for a reason. All right, let's look at the beta interrupt version. Hey, the copy stays red. I don't remember if I mentioned that part, but I knew it even if I didn't say it. But you know, I'm not answering. I'm not doing that. I'm not. I'm not fucking. I'm not playing this game where you lead me down the fucking road and you're just like, I say no hand jobs, and then you just grab my hand and put it on your dick and come on, tug a little. No! No, I told you how we're doing this. So you can just rub up on a wall for your own gratification. Either you play the game we're playing, or I just go, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> Wrath of Mesa is playing. He's playing. All right. He has selected Siren's Call. Let's go with Siren's Call. Siren's Call is a one blue instant. And it's from the ancient days where blue was the instigator color. So blue had all the tricks, including combat tricks that forced you to attack. So Siren's Call works like this. You play it on a player before their attack phase. All their creatures that don't have summoning sickness have to attack. Any that don't are destroyed at end of turn. All right, let's see what we got. All of opponent's creatures that can't attack must do so. Any normal creatures that cannot attack are destroyed at end of turn. Oh, I didn't get the wall part. Play during opponent's turn before opponent's attack. Creatures summoned uh, this turn are unaffected by Siren's Call. So I missed I missed a little bit about the walls. It's like, I this is part of what's fun is I'm like, I'm sure this is it. And it's like, nope, you missed that. Be no blaze of glory all oh, blaze of glory is wild so blaze of glory for the longest time i thought it was actually an uncommon turns out it's rare it's a one white instant you play it on a blocking creature and that creature blocks every creature it can legally block so if for example you play it on a creature that does not have flying it will block every non-flyer your opponent is attacking with if you play blaze of glory on a flying creature, it will block all of your opponent's attackers. And the artwork for Blaze of Glory has a dude down in the corner with an axe pulled back like this, swing forwards with like yellow and purple waves of energy coming up off of them. Well, bam, right? That's uh, that's that's uh, that's the vibe. That's the vibe for Blaze of Glory. Shot down, bam. All right. Oh, it's hordes. Yeah, it's not waves. It's hordes of enemies coming down on them. But I got the yellow and purple right in the axe, dude. And, uh, beta. Uh, target defending creature cannon must block all attacking creatures it can legally block. For example, a normal non-flying target defender cannon must block all normal non-flying attackers at once, but it can't block any flying. All right. Controller of target defending. Controller of target defender may distribute damage among attackers as desired. So it does combat damage to whoever you want it to. That's fine. That's fine. Pretty good. Pretty good. You know, I got to say, I've got a pretty good rate. I'm not getting every single detail, but pretty close. Pretty close. Ned the Barbarian. Ooh, false orders. Oh, my brain's thinking of the artwork for Disharmony from Legends. Nope, 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 nope. Zone in on it. False orders. One red. False orders. One red instant. 
Uh, basically, you choose how one creature blocks during your opponent's turn. Um, yeah, they discontinue that in Unlimited. And the artwork is literally just a... It looks like a like an unfurled scroll that is holding the false orders that are be being given to the troop. But yeah, it's only, it's only used on your opponent's creatures and to choose a block for one creature only at instant speed. Uh, let's see here. Bam. You decide whether and how one defending creature blocks, though you can't make a choice the defending player couldn't legally make. Play after your defender's chosen defense, but before damage is dealt. It's a very odd card. A very odd card. Just natural selection, like what made Bigfoot? All right, all right, natural selection. That's an odd duck one too, because it's very similar to like a green ponder or something like that, right? So it's one green, it's instant. You get to look at the top three cards of anybody's deck. Oh, but do you get to rearrange them? Is it anybody's deck? Is it your deck? Oh, okay. Hmm, let's think about this for a second. Eagle Man. Weird Eagle Man with the, the staff with the orange knob. One green instant. I know you get to choose where to, whether to shuffle the deck. I don't think you get to manipulate the order like Sylvan Library. I'm going to go with one green instant. Look at the top three cards of either player's library. You may shuffle that library. That's what I'm going to say. And the artwork is an eagle-headed, tiger-bodied dude with a staff, right? Uh, let's see here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, does he not? Oh, no, he doesn't have a staff. Oh, no, he does have a staff. Ha-ha! <laughs> That's not rope in his hand. All right, now let's, let's see the beta version here. Look at the top three cards. Any player's library may opt to... Oh, you do get to rearrange them. Okay, all right. I was wrong about that part. I was wrong about that part. Mm. Anthony Thicket Basilisk. Oh, son, you can't pick one of my favorites from back in the day and think I'm not all about that, baby. Two green and three colorless gets you a 2-4 Thicket Basilisk. All creatures, all non-wall creatures that block or are blocked by Thicket Basilisk are destroyed at end of combat. They still get to deal their combat damage normally. The Thicket Basilisk is depicted on like, maybe like some cracked earth in some desolate looking area. And it's like, it just looks like a, like a lizard pretty much, bro. Right? All right, I know that one. I got a special place in my heart for Thicket Basilisk, bro. You slap a lure on this guy and it's, oh, we're going to town on you, son. Uh, bam. Any non-wall creature blocking Basilisk is destroyed, as is any creature blocked by Basilisk. Uh, creatures destroyed this way deal their damage before dying. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hypnotic Spectre. Come on, man. That card was... That, that everybody played that on the back of Dark Ritual. Come on, bro. Two black and one for a 2-2 two, two flyer. And whenever it hits an opponent, boom. They, well, whenever it's a player. They discard a card at random from their hand. It's amazing how once you remove Dark Ritual from the equation, Hypnotic Spectre really isn't that strong, right? It's a solid card. But, like, I remember when they brought it back in 8th or ninth edition. And I was like, wow, Hippie's back! And I'm like, whoa. First turn Hippie versus third turn Hippie. Huge difference. Huge difference. So, yeah, there's, that's... The 30th edition has the original artwork and all that, so it looks right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, Farmstead. <laughs> Farmstead. Okay. Farmstead is a really, really, really bad enchantment. How bad? Come on, bro. You played this. You played this. Picture it. Picture the little farm. Picture the, the yellow farmhouse with the axe out front. Three white mana, enchant land. Two white mana and tap the enchanted land. Gain a life. Do it only during your upkeep. It's awful. It is awful. Hey, lettuce says Stormbind. Lettuce, 
We're doing Alpha Beta Unlimited. So we're going to get into Ice Age and the other sets as we go forward. But today, we're sticking to Alpha Beta Unlimited. So choose something from uh, from that set and we'll do it up, bro. Let me see. Survey says Farmstead. All right, here we go. Let's look at the original. The, uh, the good old beta. Bam. Three white. The hut. The axe in the front. Enchant land. The target lands controller means enchanted, like whoever owns the land. You gain one life during the upkeep if you pay two white. Wait, do you not tap it? Oh, no. Okay, don't tap the land. See? I was wrong about that part. Still, I remembered most of it. I remembered most of it. I'm seeing a bunch of cards from Legends and stuff. So, nope. Any card that's not actually part of the set, I'm just going to ignore that. You guys can save that for the day we do that set. Because I'm actually, I'm enjoying this. This is fun. This is fun. It's nostalgic. There's like, so I, <laughs> clearly, I remember a lot about the earliest days of Magic. Even the jankiest cards. Illusionary Mask. Oh, that's a fun one. That's wild. So Illusionary Mask is two mana to put out. It's an artifact that lets you pay X mana when you're casting a creature. And that X serves to, serves to hide the actual casting cost. So if you wanted to, let's say, cast a creature that costs two, when you activate the Illusionary Mask, you would pay X as two or higher. And so nobody actually knows the exact casting cost of the creature. You turn the creature card face down, and it remains face down like that until it either becomes tapped or attacks, at which point you flip it face up to reveal it. And under the current rules, you can actually use, uh, you could use Illusionary Mask to cheat out Phyrexian Dreadnought. You could pay one mana, put it face down, and then flip it up. Because you can actually, with the new rules, you can flip the creature up whenever you want. You can actually reveal it whenever you choose, unless they've re errated it again. But Illusionary Mask is, a, is an amazing card that is also very rules complex. And the artwork is amazing. It's just so insane. With the crazy swirling eyes and the goofy little butthole mouth. Whoo! Right? Uh, not this Not this language. Let's go and look at the original beta language on it. All right. X mana. You can summon a creature face down so opponent doesn't know what it is. The X cost can be any amount, even zero. It serves to hide the true casting cost of the creature, which you still have to spend. As soon as face down creature re receives damage, deals damage, or is tapped, you must turn it face up. So I got some of the details about turning it face up right, some, and they've changed the wording on this card a million times, so there is that too. That does, that does make it trickier. That does make it trickier. Oh, Millmaster stealing the board and saying Raging River. Oh, bro. Raging River is such a weird card and really cool. So Raging River is a two red enchantment that fundamentally alters the board state in terms of all creatures have to be placed on either side of the river. So when the Raging River comes out, or wait, is it when you attack? Hmm, is it when they come out? Maybe it's just when you attack. Raging River causes creatures to get split into two different piles so that when you're attacking, your opponent has to decide what side of the river their creatures are on. So basically, I have out the Raging River. I go to attack you, you choose what side, like, I'm going to put one of my guys on the right side, one of the guys on the left side, and then I choose what side of the river all my guys are attacking on. So it's a great way to divvy up your opponent's attackers. I'm going to say that it's, um, I'm going to say that it just, it's just on attack. So on attack, you make the decision to split. And the artwork is literally a raging river just running down. All right, raging river. When uh, when you attack, non-flying... Oh, I missed the non-flying part. It doesn't affect flyers. Cool, that's so flavorful. All right. When you attack, non-flying defender creatures must be divided as opponent wishes between the left and right sides of the river. You then choose on which side of the river to place each attacking creature. And attacking creatures can only be blocked by creatures on the same side of the river. So that's, that is a fun card, man. That is funky. I played it, I played it in my cube, right? So... 
My memory is a tad bit foggy, but overall, solid. Beano! Oh, you wanted to steal the board, but Millmaster beat you to it. Simulacrum! Now, this is a weird card. Simulacrum, Simulacrum, depending on how you pronounce it, is a one black, one colorless instant that uh, it says all the damage that's been applied to you thus far this turn is instead retroactively applied to a creature that you control. Further damage from any sources is treated normally. And then the artwork shows um, like a wizard kind of hiding off while another version of himself is just getting janked up with magic, right? He's got like black robes and maybe like a little gold kind of crown or something like that. Something like that, hold on. Uh, yeah, man. How epic is this concept, too, right? Like, the wizard, like, oh, here you go. Look at you. You're going to take all this for me. All damage to you done... Okay, it says, all damage done to you so far this turn is instead retroactively applied to one of your creatures in play. Man, I got the wording pretty close. If this damage kills the creature, it can be regenerated. Even if there's more than enough damage to kill the creature, you don't suffer any of it. Further, further damage this turn is treated normally. Hey, hey, hey. Good job, me. Good job, me! Antel, Fire Elemental. Ooh, you like hot lady Fire Elementals. Two red and three for a 5-4 vanilla, bro. For your hotness Fire Elemental lady. She's got Flame Jugs, son. She got Flame Jugs, son. Uh, all right. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Lattice, you know what? You're right, buddy. You do have the board. My bad. I got all thrown off by the card name and everything went out the window. I gave it to Millmaster for no reason. And all I, everything I said about the Super Chats is wrong. I'm so focused on being right with Magic cards that I'm <laughs> doing everything else wrong. Okay, so you're Lord of the Board. That's correct. And you're choosing Ice Storm. Oh, I know why you're choosing Ice Storm. Because you want to give that Viking a nice kiss in the face. So you're like, yo, let me warm those Viking bones, bro. I love that you're on a one green, two, one green and two sorcery that says destroy target land. I love the way you're depicted with your sword pushing against the snow. All right. All right, so, uh, Ice Storm. Yeah, yeah, he does it again. He does it again, son. Uh, 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 right down to the dude that let us wants to warm up. <laughs> Anto, Library of Lang. Oh, Library of Lang, okay. Library of Lang is a one casting cost artifact that has a dude in like a purple robe from a side profile and it says you no longer have a maximum hand size and whenever you would discard a card you can choose to discard that card to the top of your deck rather than into your graveyard and you can look at the card before you decide library of lang show me a thing Ba -da -ba -da -ba. I love the old school wordings. There's no limit to the size of your hand. If a card force you discard, you may choose to discard to the top of your library rather than your graveyard. The discard is random. You can look at the card before deciding where to discard it. Yeah, yeah! Uh, 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 uh. Gianna! Camouflage! Camouflage is very similar to Illusionary Mask in that it is a card that revolves around putting your cards face down. So, Camouflage is one green, it's an instant. All of your creatures that are attacking are turned face down and your opponent has to decide which ones to block without knowing who's who. Then once all the blocking is decided, you flip the creatures face up. Now they've changed the wording of Camouflage now to be some insane, you just randomize who's blocking who. But back in the day, the way the original Camouflage worked was you flipped your cards over and they chose without being able to see. All right, Camouflage. 
You may rearrange your attacking creatures and place them face down, revealing which is which only after defense is chosen. If this results in impossible blocks, such as non-flying creatures blocking flying creatures, illegal blockers can't block this turn. I always forget about that part. I always forget about that part. Mm. Uh, Gaia's Liege is super wordy for that, that much of an ability. Not that much of an ability? What are you talking about? Gaia's Liege is as big as the number of forests you have out. Every land you put out grows the Gaia's Liege. He also has ability, tap, turn target land into a forest for as long as Gaia's Liege is out. When he's attacking, his power and toughness are equal to the number of forests your opponent has. So he literally just go, hey, let me hose off your mana supply one by one, and then I can swing in and pound the hell out of you. And in the meantime, I'm a giant defender. On top of that, my artwork is some crazy antler dude who's literally like a nature spirit bonded with Gaia. Gaia's Liege is epic on every single level. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, son? No. No. Gaia's Liege isn't too many words for not that much of an ability. It's all the words for an awesome ability. Gaia's Liege, you are the man. Don't listen to him. Don't you listen to him. Your regal mustache, your glorious nature wanderings. You're awesome, bro. You're awesome. Millmaster says, give me an L. Give me an I. Give me a C. Give me an H. What's that spell? What's that smell? Lich. It's Lich. You're not picking Lich, though. We already did Lich. You're Lord of the Bard, but we did Lich. So if you miss doing Lich, you can pick another card. No point in making you... Well, I mean, I, I'm going to nail it this time. I'll tell you that. I won't get it wrong. I won't, won't miss any parts of it the second time round. <laughs> yeah, Gaze Leash is awesome. Love Gaze Leash. All right, Millmaster, now you're legitimately lowered of the board instead of that illegitimately that I let you be earlier. Who did a lich? You can't watch. It's not footage. And we're talking about the magic card. You know what? I'm leaving. I'm going to top up my root beer now. You think about what you've done. Uh, let the devil out so I can get more devil in me. says winter orb for us difficult little madams winter orb is a vile hateful artifact just dreadful and i know this from making many people suffer by using it myself uh, <laughs> winter orb is a two casting cost artifact that says you can only untap one land a turn that's it that's all it lets you do untap one land a turn it's pure misery the artwork depicts polar bears who are angry at this winter orb. They're like, I'm mad that this orb is winterifying the land. It's an incredibly powerful object. And back in the day, you could shut it off if you tapped it. So people would use it with Icy Manipulator or Relic Barrier from Legends. And they would just go, only you. No, no you. No you. You just get to untap one land. I untap all my lands. It's dirty pool. Winter orb is the dirtiest nonsense. I mean, there is dirtier, but Winter Orb is right up there in terms of just 
misery. Misery, bro. Look at that. Players can untap only one land each during their untap phase. Creatures and artifacts are untapped as normal. I love how all the old cards would just have extra rules written on them just in case. Bro, look at how beautiful the artwork looks in terms of the saturation. And look at how, like, I always thought it was crazy. It was just like a, like a dead, a dead polar bear under the Winter Roar. But I'm like, what's going on? I thought the Winter Roar makes it all wintry. Like, why is that bear dead? Artwork's insane. It's insane. Graves, bro, when it comes to like, when it comes to Alpha Beta Unlimited, yeah, I think the likelihood of me being stumped is really, really, really low. And it increases as we go from here. Even just moving into like Arabian Nights and Antiquities opens up more room for me to make mistakes and not know cards. The further out we get, once we start to get into like Homelands territory and all that, it will start to get more and more hazy, Mirage, Exodus, all that. I am enjoying this as a concept. Do you guys like this? Is this fun? Because I'm vibing on it and I could see us turning this into a series and going through all the different parts of Magic's history up until the threshold where everything stumps me and there's no point in playing anymore. You know what I mean? We could have a progression of, wow, he knows pretty much everything about pretty much every card too. He knows almost nothing about any of these cards now. Like if you start saying random comments from Am and Ket, forget it. I'm not going to know. What does Vizier, Vizier of Butt Touching do? Uh, put a negative one, negative one cheat counter on you or something? I don't know. Zombify a butt? I got no idea. I got no idea. Mm. Millmaster, are you just scrolling back through the stream and picking cards that have already been picked? Lich has been done. How much shot Zook's already been done? We did that. We definitely did that. He's the magic historian, not the postmodern magic researcher. A lot of a lot of new magic cards just like don't feel that memorable, right? A lot of the old stuff was just more memorable, and there were fewer cards, and I was like obsessed with magic, right? So let us, <laughs> yeah, homelands, homelands will be a trip. Homelands will be a trip. There's a bunch of trash in there. Jogan, Ironclaw Orcs. Oh, you want to talk about the cowardly orcs? You got it, buddy. One red and one for a 2-2. Two, two. They're like a grizzly bear, except they have the fatal flaw that they can't block a creature that has tough, uh, what is it, power greater than one. So essentially, they're cowardly. They don't want to go into combat with something that can destroy them. That's the idea. I like that. That's transmitted in the flavor. It's like, these cowardly orcs refuse to go into a fair fight. They only want to go into fights. They know they can win or at the very least survive, right? And I'm pretty sure it's like, what, a green helmet, bluish kind of face? Or maybe it's the other way around? Yeah, something like that. They suck, though. They suck hard. All red. All right. All right. There you go. Can't be used to block any creature power more than one. They're little cowards. They're little cowards. Mailmaster, if you missed the beginning of the stream, I mean, I'm sending out a notif notification through Discord at the beginning. That's the most I can do. YouTube will not send notifications to everybody for the streams. So I have them at roughly the same time and I put out notifications on the Discord. That's the most I can do. That's the most I can do. Ralph, Personal Incarnation is the card that got me into Magic, actually, 100%. That's the one that started me playing. I looked at it and was like, this is so cool as a concept. 100%. That led me, that led me into Magic the Gathering. Ankh of Mishra. All right, yep, that one's easy. Two mana artifact literally is an Ankh. They actually mention it in the story too. Mishra carries around tucked into his belt. And whenever a player plays a land, they take two damage for putting that land out. Ankh of Mishra is obnoxious it is an obnoxious card to play against every time i play a land i'm getting ganked for two and if they put up one like when someone goes first turn sol ring ankh of mishra it's like oh you're a fucking special kind of asshole aren't you right like you're not coming out with something like winter orb or whatever you're like no we're playing some kind of weird dickhead bullshit aren't we what's next dingus egg armageddon what are we doing here what are we doing 
What are we doing? Time Twister. Oh, that's a fun one. One blue and two for a sorcery. All players shuffle their hands and graveyards and libraries together and then draw a brand new hand of seven cards each. So it's like a reset button. It's great. And the artwork has an hourglass with like the sands of time going through it. And I'm pretty sure a warrior being unmade at the same time, right? It's awesome. It's awesome. Oh, you know what? I didn't pull up the uncommissioner, did I? <laughs> I just said it and didn't show it. It's like, I'm not going to show it because I'm wrong. Okay. Uh, hold on. Here's the... There you go. Put it a land. Take damage from the Ankh, bro. 100%. 100%. And then Time Twister, since we just did that. Yeah, there you go. The hourglass, the dude being unmade by the sands of time. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Caps are, what's an alpha volcanic island worth? I imagine multiple human organs at this point, bro. Jade statue. What a hunk of junk that is, eh? Jade statue. I remember loving Jade statue so much. I thought it was so cool. It becomes animate. It's like, whoa, but oh, it's awful. Four to put out. It's an artifact that costs two to activate. You can only activate it during combat, during the combat phase. And when you do, it turns into a 3-6 creature until end of turn. And if I'm not mistaken... That's the first time we get flavor text from Norin the Wary, where he says something along the lines of, the other guys dared me to touch it, but I know it weren't no ordinary hunk o' rock. Pretty sure. Pretty sure I just nailed that shit. And the actual artwork itself is a fat little, like, almost Buddha style, but not really Buddha style, genuinely jade statue. Uh, all right. All right, four mana, two jade statue becomes creatures for the duration of the current attack exchange. Can be a creature only during attack or defense. Flavor text, some of the other guys dared me to touch it, but I know it weren't no ordinary hunk of rock. Word for fucking word, baby! I nailed it! I nailed every single part of this card! Yeah! Yes, man! That's a win. That's a win. Right there. Nor in the wary. That's some good flavor. That's some good flavor. Yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Remembering junk. Remembering junk. Uh, uh, remembering junk. <laughs> huh. All right. Well, you know what? Let's take a break from guessing, guessing cards and stuff for now. Because I want to open up. The box. Shelton. Shelton. You, you, you're you sitting around here waiting. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Shelton? That's me knocking. You know what? While I'm waiting for him to respond, let's switch over to the camera view and tighten up the focus. Uh... Mm -mm. Okay. There we go. Looks pretty good. All right. There we go. Okay. And that was the right amount of time. Shelton! Shelton sent a mystery box. What's in it? What's in it? 
Oh, Brian Super Chat says, can you name two cards with the word retroactively in their text boxes? Well, I mean, we already did Simulacrum, right? So that has retroactively in it. What other card? We're talking from Alpha Beta Unlimited has retroactively in it. I don't know. See, it's it's far more difficult to try and like pull up the text of every card that exists. And how many cards actually affect things previously? I don't even know if you're talking about Alpha Beta Unlimited. Some Simulacrum obviously fits into that. Uh, anyways, anyways, let's uh, let's see what's in here. Let's see what's in this package that Shelton has sent. Kenziki, there's a mistake with the red elemental blast from Alpha. Off the top of my head, I don't know that one. The mistakes I know are that Circle Protection Black wasn't in Alpha. The Alpha Orcish Aura Flame costs one and one red instead of one and three colorless. Um, and Cyclopean Tomb didn't have a casting cost. I remember that. Um, is it the Unlimited Plateau that's wrong? Or, no, that's the revised one. Unlimited was the last time that had the original art, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know all the errors. So that's uh, that definitely... That definitely is something I don't know. Oh. Look at that. You got like a... You got a little bubble thing in there just to keep the box from shifting around. Nicely done, buddy. Oh. It's pristine, too. Look at that. Nothing on it. The mystery persists. We go from one white box to a smaller white box. Oh, look, okay. What is this? What is this? Uh, shiny new Johannes Voss token collection. Beautiful artistic custom tokens. Complete tick list, yo. Whoa, look at how big it is. Look at how big it is. That's huge. And it's, bro. Bro, is that like all of these? Is that all of this stuff, man? Look at the size of this stack. Are these all boss tokens? Is that what this is? Bro. I don't think I understood. I, I think Shelton tried to clue me in to what this was going to be. What? Oh, man. Look at this. Look. It's like zombies. And wolves, oh man, look at that, that's sick, bro. Warriors, oh bro. These will go so good with the cube, man. Vampire, spirit. Are these all different? Bro, it's, it's like everyone, wow, there's so many. There's so many, <laughs> oh cool. <gasps> look at this goat guy. Look at this goat guy. What? That's awesome. Oh, look at this little guy. Look at the germ. Look at him. Bro, I would play a video game with this guy where he just runs around whipping people with his little head dong. Well, bam, well, bam. Welcome to head donger. Run headlong for head dong. Well, bap, well, bap. Oh, I love him. I love him. That's amazing. That's amazing. Bro, these are awesome. Oh, these are sick. <laughs> oh, cool. Look at this angel, man. Look at this angel, bro. That's awesome. Oh, and a little ghost. A little, a little ghosty goo. <laughs> a rat token. Oh, he's, he's thinking about a brain. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Matrix mind bending spoon kid. Hey, look at the morph token. Look at the morph token. Oh, man. Look at this elemental. Look at this. There's so much awesome stuff in here, dude. There's so much. Oh, and they're all. They're so. It's a broccoli. Oh, my God. It's a broccoli. It's an elemental, and it's a broccoli, and it says, I'm going to grow on you. <laughs> oh, if these were in order, they're not anymore. Oh, bro. What? Look, there's a squirrel working a little mini crane. 
<laughs> bro, these are awesome. Yeah, these are dope, bro. What? Oh, look at the little elephant. Look at the elephant man. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Oh, yeah, I could look at these forever. All right. Oh, what's this? Hold on, there's something in the sleeve here. Oh, cool! Cool. Check it out. It's a secret layer of Pilgrim's Eye. It's a flying dream catcher. Thanks, man. That's neat. That's funky. I do like the schematic versions of magic cards where you get to see all the little diagrams in the background and stuff. I like this vibe and I like things that actually feel like they'd be powered by magic because this thing ain't flying any other way. Look at it. How's it even flying? It needs magic. It's got a little power stone there in the middle. That's awesome. That's awesome. Shelton, you were subbed to his Patreon and collected most of them. These are amazing, dude. These are like, they're, they're sick. They look so good. Thanks for the hookup, man. You're the man. You're the man, Shelton. This is awesome. There's so much, there's like so much variation. So many different pieces of artwork. <laughs> what? Legendary monkey with a, with a. <laughs> oh, bro. So cool. So cool. <laughs> Look at this little worm. Look at this little party worm, man. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, what are these? Oh, there's even like embalmed, exerted, time counters. That's awesome. Charge energy. Yeah, that's dope, man. This is sweet. This is sweet. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right, hold on. Let me let me pack these neatly back in this box here. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Love it. So many, man. So many. So many, me. We may just dedicate a stream at some point to sitting down and going through all these because this is, this is pretty dope, right? Hold on. Let's keep that separate. We'll put this back in here with this too. I'm going to keep the tick list out right here. Put that in front of my monitor because I like the way that looks. So I'm going to put that there. And yeah, great job, Shelton. That's awesome. You're the man, buddy. I raise my barks and salute to you, son. The red elemental blast was printed as an instant originally. Oh, you wouldn't be able to use it to even stop stuff then because to counter stuff back in the day, it had to go at interrupt speed. It had to. Both Falcon, they are great. They are great. I understand why you would be jelly because I'd be jelly of them too, but I don't have to be because I got them. Hey, hell yeah. No, this is great. This is great because I don't actually have a token box for my cube and just the idea of getting all the different tokens together that I might need for the cube kind of felt like a hassle and I'm like, I don't feel like going through and itemizing a list and I also don't feel like making a big box of just random tokens from different sets hoping that I got the right thing. But these are all awesome looking tokens. So now it'll just be like, yo, yo, does that make a token? Hold on, I might have a token in here that makes it. And then after a little bit, I'll know and I'll separate like, okay, so these are the ones that the cube actually uses and I'll just put them in a different little box. Cause yeah, man, I'm gonna sleeve them up to keep them nice and use them. That's dope. That's dope. Sarah Angel. Nah, never heard of that one. Never heard of that one. That's the first stump of the night. Nobody's ever heard of a two white three three flyer with vigilance. Of course, vigilance didn't exist back then. So it says Sarah Angel does not tap to attack. 
and it shows a lady with her chin tilted back to a particular degree. I always thought she had kind of a weird face. She's holding what looks like a bronzish sword in the air. And I remember my buddy, I remember, it'd be funny if he actually showed up in the live stream because he does sometimes show up. I remember him having the Sarah Angel and tilting the card. And I'm like, bro, you can't see down her shirt by tilting the card, man. He's trying to see the Sarah Angel's titties by tilting the card, all right? So here, here. now that I've talked about good old 4-4 angle face, let's go ahead and pop it up on the screen. All right, bam. There you go. There you go. Did I say 3-3? Three, three? Well, she's 4-4, four, four, so. If I said 3-3, three, three, I misspoke. And guess what? I'm the final arbiter. So if I'm too high to say the right numbers, that's not me being stumped. In my head, I wasn't like, she's a 3-3 three, three, like the fallen angel, all right? So if you think that's a victory, I got bad news for you. That's just, I'm pretty fucking baked. I figured I would try and fucking give myself something that would make me not able to remember shit. But I literally had 4-4 four, four in my mind, so I'm the only judge that matters. That's how that works. I gotta actually be stumped. For real, for real. Bo Falcon was right when he was like, there's no point in even bringing up Sarah Angel. <clears throat> so whatever. I have to actually not know the card misspeaking don't count what are you gonna do what are you gonna do creature bond is obscure creature bond is kind of obscure i mean we did recently get it in a magic 30 pack so i had more of a refresher so it's like one blue and one for an enchant creature where you gotta pay like two mana during the upkeep or take two damage. And it's got like a lady in a yellow dress who actually has a huge creature there that was hard to notice at first. So there's that. There's that. Genuine stumps only, right? Oh yeah, this is the, oh no, you know what? That's funny. I got it wrong. I got this one wrong. I was thinking of uh, what Power Leak does. There you go. You know what? Creature Bond got me. That's a genuine stump. I'll give you that one. That is not me going, I was thinking a different thing. I 100% got it wrong and saw this one recently. That's a good one. You get points for that. You get points for that. Who was who was that who just said that? Uh Gerthulu. There you go. You got a you got a you got a genuine stump. Not I misspoke. I screwed that one up. I screwed that one up. So that's a, that's a genuine stump. You get a point. You get a point. I didn't think that we'd even get stumps on that level. I mean, I got the artwork and the casting cost, but that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. That's a stump. That's a stump. You have stumped the historian. I need a little artwork of a stump that comes up on the screen with my face. Yo, I got stumped. I got to make I gotta make a little animation for that for because I'm going to get more stumped. I am going to get more stumped. And that fucking fat edible that I had before the stream it's kicking in more. I can freaking feel it. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm at a disadvantage. Fallon, the game is rigged. you damn right. You you want to talk about how rigged it is? There's no prizes and I keep all the money, right? There's a, This is the most rigged shit ever. It's like pay to, pay to get more attention to your interaction choice as opposed to anything. I don't know. The rules. The, I guess I should actually have a little thing the next time we do it saying choose cards from this set we're only doing this set or whatever you know like next time we're gonna do next time we're gonna do arabian nights we'll go we'll go just up the chain so we'll go arabian nights next time because i'm enjoying this so i want to do more of it i think it's fun i think it's fun franklin cunningham wants a one one vanilla mon's goblin raiders one 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 mana he's one red he's one one and it's like, the, the, the flavor text talks about Mons Goblin Raider hordes, Pashalik Mons, and how they're like a thunderhead or something like that, right? Ba ba ba, Something along those lines. It's actually named after, like, um, one of Richard Garfield's friends, right? 
Uh, oh wait, is there no, is it like just like that or something like that? Is it just mons? The name of it's always been weird. Yeah, there you go. It's always just been a weirdly named card to me. Mons is Goblin Raiders, but we always just called them Mons Goblin Raiders, you know? The intricate dynamics of Runvel Goblin affairs are often confused with anarchy. The chaos, however, is the chaos of a thundercloud. Direction will sporadically and violently appear. Pashalik Mons and his raiders are the thunderhead that leads the storms. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Ralph says, Hatcher unfiltered is prize enough. Here, here. Felon, you'll be bored of this concept long before we ever got to, uh, long before we would ever get to Kaladesh, because there's going to be a bunch of sets where I'm like, I don't know any of these cards. What's the fun of me just going, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, let's look it up. That'll get tiresome. At a certain point, the game loses its flair when I have no information, right? It's just like, what's the fun there? It's not Stump the Historian, it's like fish in a barrel, right? That's the level. That's the level. Pirate Ship. Oh, Pirate Ship. Pirate Ship is a 4-3 summon ship. It costs one blue and four. Tap it to do one damage to any target. And uh, it can't attack your opponent unless they have an island. And you have to bury it if you don't have an island. And the artwork is literally a pirate ship. I think the... I think it's like sailing off to the right and the... The sails are, are they brown? I want to say brown. Of course, it could be way off on that. Yep, that looks brown to me. I call that brown. Sailing in the right direction. Aren't I a fancy boy? Tap to do one damage to any target. Can't attack unless opponent has islands in play. Uh, and it's destroyed if you don't have any islands. There you go. There you go. Nailed that one. Nailed that one. Hypnotic, you want to see me sweat? That's when we get to other sets. This is like, this Alpha Beta Unlimited is a softball pitch to me where there's very there's very few corner cards that can really hose bag my mind. Creature Bond got me real good, especially considering I saw that card, read that card, and we talked about it in the last two weeks. That's, that like, I'm pretty amazed. I'm pretty amazed with that one. Magical Hack. Look, man, fuck you. No, I'm not, bro. Do I look like some writer who's hunched over a desk that costs one blue? Am I an interrupt that says change all instances, replace all instances of one land type with another land type until end of turn, right? Do I look like a magical hack to you, buddy? Do I look like a magical hack to you? Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Bam. Bam. Ba -ba 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 -da -da -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Boats and hoes. That's right, Brian. That's right. Adam Ariste says this stream is excellent and for sure a future series idea. One, learning the depth of your knowledge. Two, the mystery, mystery beverage in your vids is root beer. Indeed, Bark's root beer to be specific. The caffeinated glory beverage that is my go-to. And actually, now that you've brought it up, it's so low that I got to go for another top up. I got to go open up another can. My supply is dwindling. All right, um, so yeah. Yeah, Adam, also, if you want to choose a card from Alpha Beta Unlimited, go for it. Millmaster, you lurking around? What, you picked three cards other people have picked and you gave up? Come on, man. What card do you want, buddy? What card do you want? <laughs> He's probably too toasted as well. That's fine. All right, anyways, I'm going to go get some more sugar water, and we'll come back and keep talking about this stuff. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I'm surprised I actually got stumped.
some garbage almond that you can't get out of. It's not true. You're talking about some completely different garbage. But damn it, I even got like the artwork and everything right, but we still completely wrong. Oh, stop, Charlie! On the first set! What? Oh no, the mad sad story. The mad don't know shit story. Brian, you thought root beer was caffeine free? Well, let me drop some non magical knowledge for you about the magic that is Bark's root beer. It's the only caffeinated root beer because it's the only root beer made for grown adult masculine men. All the other root beers are for fucking pussies. If you drink A and W, you're not a real man. If you drink mug root beer, you're not a real man. If you fucking drink dad's root beer, that's because you want a dad in your mouth, right? All right? You, you can figure out what that means. You can figure out what that means yourself. But it definitely ain't got nothing to do with having caffeinated Barks root beer. All other root beers are lesser. And drinkers of all other root beer are lesser as well. I said it. I fucking said it. Go tell Coca-Cola. Tell them I'm saying this shit so they'll sponsor me. But like he says... Hateful things about other root beers. Damn right I do. You damn right I do. Nerdvana, you drink A and W. That's right. That's right. You're a little boy with little boy arms drinking your A and W root beer out of a bottle. Desolator, you drink Spretches. That's a made up thing. But if it ain't got caffeine in it, then guess what? Up until today, I thought you were a man with a bunker and a bunch of bags of rice. And now, I don't even know what to think anymore, Desolator. Now, maybe you're 11. Maybe you're 11 years old because you can't handle the caffeinated root beer like us adult, fucking ripped, masculine men. All right? That's what it's all about. That's what it's... I do a lot of push-ups and drink a lot of root beer. One of those two things is true. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Fastbond, oh, with the traditional wizard style. I do find the artwork on Fastbond delightful. It's a one green enchantment that is completely busted. It lets you lay any number of lands you want a turn, and every land you lay past the first one does one damage to you. Thematically, the concept is it's normally when you lay a land that you bonding with the land, you are, well, not bonding with your land, that's you tapping into the bond that you already have with lands that you've developed on different planes of existence and drawing their magical energy to you. Now, the concept behind Fast Bond is you can speed the process up, but doing that, drawing those magical powers into you is very damaging. So there's a price to pay. So yeah, Fast, fast Bond's one green enchantment, play any number of lands a turn, take one damage for every land past the first, and it has a delightful wizard in little fucking purple wizard raiment with a, he's like on a hilltop or on a clifftop with a little staff and everything. Love it. Love it. Fast Bond is awesome. Is it two words or one? Might be one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, look at that, man. He's got that nice little vista and everything. Love it. Love it. You can put as many lands into play as you want each turn. It does one damage to you for each land beyond the first you played in a single turn. Bam! Very straightforward. Very powerful. Ew, Nerdvana. No, Brisk is disgusting. I don't know how anybody, like, drinks Brisk. Because one sip of it in your mouth and your brain goes, spit this trash out. Spit this garbage out of your face hole. 100%. 100%. Speedwagon, you like IBC? I bet you do, bro, because it's the closest thing you can find that fucking is in a brown bottle and has I closest to IBS, right? You'd rather suck on a big bottle of IBS, but you just can't find that and you won't admit your weird fetishes. So you drink the lesser root beers to fool even yourself. It's barks or nothing. That's it. That's it. Fuck all that other shit. 
Jess Sirens Call. You were here for that. You were here for the earlier Sirens Call. We did that. We did that. I can't, I'm not going to keep a whole running list of everything that people have picked. That's not going to work. This system has some flaws, but whatever. I guess I'll just yell. The system has no flaws. I will just yell at people when they do things that are wrong. That has always worked in the past. It will always work in the future. No! Choose again! <laughs> Jeremy the Sarsaparilla is going to be in the P.O. Box um, by Tuesday the 8th on 12. Oh, cool. Sometimes those delivery dates aren't bang on, so we'll see. But that means it's going to be soon either way. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what it's like. Ooh, RC Cola. I remember... I remember being able to buy cans of RC Cola for 10 cents each at a festival in the park. I am so old. <laughs> I'm so old. Speaking of festivals, uh, there's a festival in that park this weekend. Rib Fest is this weekend, guys. I gotta get rib meat in me. I gotta go get some rib meat. Rib Fests are a fucking rip-off, dude. They're a rip-off. Uh, Jess, oh, Slight of Mind. Okay, that's got some funky artwork. It's got like a purple brain with like an orange brain stem or whatever. It's one, it's one blue interrupt. Change all instances of one color word. Replace all instances of one color word with, um, another one of your choice until end of turn. It's the same thing as Magical Hack, except it does color words instead. So you can cast it on permanents or spells that are on the stack. Slight Wolf Mind. <laughs> Oh, no, the uh, the brainstem is green and it was orange around it. Got that part wrong. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Does what I said it does. Oh, man. Oh, Jeremy, bro, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to level with you. I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't actually pay attention to politics at all like whenever anybody leaves a comment on my video and it's talking about canadian politics i'm just like oh i don't couldn't tell you anything that's going on couldn't care less boring don't give a shit so like i'm tuned the fuck out when it comes to politics i'm tuned out don't care about american politics don't care about canadian politics so there's no like what ifs anybody mentions anything i'm like huh yeah what else? <laughs> you know, it's like it's like hearing about a game I don't play. It's like, oh, it's cool that you're into something. Anyways, I'm going back to thinking about Dave the Diver or whatever, you know? That stuff is just, I'm just so bored by it. That's the truth. I, my brain just doesn't care to pay any attention to it. That was years and years ago where I, I had been interested, but not now. Not now. So, yeah. I don't worry about it. I don't worry about it. There's like, there's tons of people who love to talk about that stuff. And there's like, they're like super dogged about it too. So it's like super easy to find people to converse with about it, you know? But I got my own, I got my own shit. I'd way rather just talk about old school magic cards and whatevs, bro. When I, here's the thing. If I'm getting politically active, I'd be full on politically active. I wouldn't even be here doing this shit right now. I'd be off running, doing whatever. I got no interest in it. Like zero that's why the rules are no politics in here keep the politics the fuck out right i don't run around yelling about that in the comment section to people but it is straight up part of the streams so we don't even get into it it's just like now nah, we're here to have a good time and nothing gets people more riled up than particular subjects politics being one of them and then it just turns into a thing where they're just like, look, I know, I know, like, people don't want to talk about it, but I'm still going to keep going. I'll, people do that in person. It's hilarious. Where they're just like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't care about politics. And they're like, yeah, but no, 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 you don't seem to understand. I don't care. I don't, I, I genuinely don't care. So if you want to talk, we can talk about something else or I'm just wandering off. Like, I'm, I, I'm not worried about, like, um, I'm not worried about, like, uh, sitting there for a polite conversation where it's just like i'm like ah man life is short let's talk about something we both like or whatever i ain't here to tell you that that's fucking shit you shouldn't be talking about it's just like bro it's like your wife coming up to me and talking about her shoes i'm like yo i'm zoning 
my brain is tuning out. I don't want to be rude to you and ignore you, but like I'm gonna because my brain's gonna give me no choice. That's what happens. I tune out. You just, I just find my brain going whatever. So, you know, that's the deal. That's the deal. You don't think I do anything half fast? That's true. That's true. <clears throat> Jose, you're gonna tell you're gonna tell your kids that I'm Richard Garfield. Do it up. Tell them I'm Garfield the cat and I love lasagna. I don't care, man. People say all kinds of shit about me on the internet. It's hilarious. They come by and they're like, yo, yo, man. It makes me happy to know everybody thinks you're toxic. I'm like, shit, bro. Everybody thinks I'm toxic? Could have fucking fooled me, but all right. Cool. By everybody, you mean just like you, right, bro? Because <laughs> like, I think there'd be a whole different vibe if everybody thought that. But pff, what the fuck do I know, man? What the hell do I know? My worst videos get like a 96% approval rating, but do go on. <laughs> Desolator knows how it is. Also, there's a fucking place to go. You want to talk about politics? He's fucking down to talk about that shit. I'm just bored by it. That's my problem. I just, it's so boring. It's so boring. And people are so into it. And I just, I'm like, I can't, man. It's like, it's... It's not my hobby right now, you know? That's it. That's it. When's Canada be good at hockey again? Oh, shit, man. You know what? Sports don't mean fucking nothing to me. Don't mean a damn fucking thing. People come by and be like, yo, hey, what are you doing for Super Bowl weekend? i be like, shit, it's Super Bowl weekend? May as well be known as every other fucking weekend because who gives a shit? No, but for real, guy, listen, listen. Just listen. Dudes are going to put on like... Really thick dudes are going to put on super tight, like, pants so you can check out their sweet ham hocks, right? And then they're going to put on big shoulder pads to look real big. And then they're going to put dome balls on their heads. And then they're going to, like, leap at each other. And it's like, okay. Yeah, but, like, one guy's going to, like, run with a, a ball. All right? Sometimes he's going to throw it to people and they're going to jump on each other. And the game's, like, an hour long, but it's actually six hours long because they're going to pause it every four seconds and like it's gonna be the most boring crap you've ever seen in your life and it's just like all sports are boring all sports are boring they are all so boring it's like if it's something you like to do to drink and what like yo it's something to stare at while i drink cool but like for me i'm so bored by it i'm like yo have you heard of like video games and movies and shit because like this sports stuff is from um it's from like caveman days where it's like, yo, bro, I know that, like, we have, like, movies and video games and stuff. But what what if we took part of a tree and hit a chunk of the earth with it? It's like, what? Yeah, baseball, bro. Same difference, right? A rock and a stick. No, but, like, I got a fancy ball and I got a fancy stick. Who fucking cares, man? It's dull. How the fuck do you get into it? How do you enjoy it? How do you give a shit? I don't understand. I do not understand. It's so boring. And people get so into it. I love my team. Why? Why? It's so boring. I find it all so dull. I'm like, like there's epic stories out there. There's so much cool shit now. Like, I'm not trying to stop people from enjoying it. I just don't get it. I don't get it. For like a week, I was like, women's curling, woo! And I watched like Olympic women's curling. For like a week, I was fucking glued to the TV. Push! Push, you stupid bitch! Work that broom, right? But then like after that, it was just gone. And I, I'm just like, okay. But like, it was like, it was an Olympic thing. And Canada was doing well and whatever. Like, I just don't care. Sports don't, they don't turn my crank. They don't turn my crank. It's all boring. Like sports, I get it if you want to go and play it, but whatever. Blue Cat says the guy with the cardboard collection. Oh yeah, bitch, did I go on and on about how it's cardboard? Did I go, why do people play sports when they could look at cardboard rectangles? No, you dumb skank. I said fucking movies and video games and shit. So don't even try that. Says the guy is using a point. I'm not going to listen to some bitch who has 80 Jean-Claude Van Damme movies and stuff, okay? I'm sick of your bullshit. So no. So no, don't even try and fucking twist my point around. Here's why, because you have magic cards. I didn't say magic cards are better than sports and people who are into sports should like magic cards, did I? 
No, I did not. I did not. Like for me, I am impressed by people who are athletic. I'm impressed by people who are bodybuilders and like high level athletic sports players, but I'm just impressed by their athleticism. I don't fucking care. It's like, it's like having high math scores or whatever. It's like, wow, good. You have awesome attributes. I don't care about watching you use them. I don't give a fuck. Like, check it out, bro. I exercise every day and I'm big and strong. Now watch me run back and forth with this ball and leap in the air. Gook! Watch, I threw the ball in the air and it went through a circle. Okay. You have good hand-eye coordination. Can I go now? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, everybody's different. Like, I love magic, but I won't watch. Like, like, like... The sports thing blows my mind in a way because I love magic, but I don't want to watch people play magic. They put it on ESPN. It was fucking dog shit. Watching people play magic in person is mostly crap. And when people come up to me and are like, here's the deck I'm playing, I don't fucking care. I don't care what deck you're playing unless we sit down and play. I don't care about looking through all your fucking cards. I don't give a shit. I genuinely don't. It's like, yeah, no, I know we have fun playing magic together. Yeah, I enjoy it. No, I don't care what you built. No, I don't care. And I don't care about the games you played with other people. When people are just laying out the details of a game, I'm like, you don't know how to tell a story in an entertaining way. You are just laying out facts that are fucking boring. I know it's exciting to you, but your play-by-play -play sucks. Your play-by-play -play sucks. I wouldn't watch it live. I don't need your boring recounting of a game of magic you won. Holy fuck, can I just, like, can I just cut my ball bag and pour bleach in the cuts? Because at least that would be fucking stimulating in some way. Christ. I don't care. I don't care. Other people do, I guess. So, whatever, man. I'm fucking weird that way, but I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Be a trigger my deck list. No. No. That happened so much when I was running tournaments. People come up. Here's a, Hey, you want to take a look at my deck? No, I don't. Because I don't care. And then they start to tell me what the deck is. And I'm like, oh, you, you don't seem to have listened to me. Remember a moment ago when you asked me if I wanted to see your deck and I said, no, I don't care? That wasn't me saying, oh, I just don't want to look at it. Tell me. That was me saying... I don't give a fuck, which means don't tell me this. I don't care. Stop talking to me. Stop it. Fucking stop it. Why are you asking me fucking questions if you're not going to fucking listen to the answer? You already know what you want. You're walking up, hey, do you want me to jerk off on your chest? And I say no, and you go, well, guess what? This is how I do it. Fuck you, man. Fuck you. Shut up. And you know what? I know on one level, that just makes me a miserable prick. Because they just want to share their enjoyment of magic. That's it. They just want to share their enjoyment. That's all it is. Them coming up. Yo, I'm having a good time. I love my deck. I'm excited. All this. And then I turn around and go, I don't care. Your excitement isn't my excitement. And I can't fake it. I don't want to. I don't have to. I will play magic with you. We can have a good time. I will entertain you with jokes. But I'm not going to look at your deck. And I'm not going to waste my life listening to you. Tell me about it. Okay? No. No, fuck you, become interesting. How about that? How about that? Turn it into something interesting and keep my attention. For Christ's sakes, just because we share a hobby and like playing it doesn't mean I deserve to be bored by you. Right? Right? <laughs> Slap fests on ESPN, yo. That's hilarious. Slap fests is like... I can watch a bit of that. That's not a sport. That is not a sport. That's pure fucking dumb fucking sanity. That's what that is. That's a straight up mankind has come full fucking circle. Mankind has done so well that now pure idiocy is on display. Where it's like, yo, yo, yo. Okay, we now have the internet information superhighway. Mankind is all linked up with all information. And people are dumber than ever. And getting in fights where they're just slapping the dog shit. Not fights, in competitions. Where they're slapping the shit out of each other. That's all you do. You stand there and hold the table while one guy whacks you. What are you doing? What, what, who, who's America's next biggest concussion? Like, what, bro? What? Trust me. 
I've been booted in the head. You don't fucking want it, bro. You don't want it. Like, this is this is de-evolution, you know? Jose Marcano! Oh, reverse damage. Somebody's pulling me right back on track. Shut up about the sports stuff. Let's get back to talking about original cards. All right, well, normally, I would say, no way, Jose. But guess what? Today, yes way, Jose, you're on the mark, Anno. <laughs> See what I did? I used your whole name. Wait, there's the D. You like fat D. Now I used your whole name. <laughs> Reverse damage. Two white and one. For an instant with a cute lady's face on it. And it does what it says. All damage that would be dealt to you is instead added to your life total. So basically, you pick one source, the damage it was going to do is undone and like retroactively turned into life. Yo, is that the other retroactive card from before? Did we just find our way there? She's got mm, kissable lips and dark hair. Oh, reverse the damage that's been done to my dick skin from too much friction. Reverse that damage with your mouth. Oh, feel the white healing energy, honey. I'm so dignified. Oh, I need to see the sweet beta lovins. Yeah, there we are. That's the face. That's the face. Your, your fucking cheeks are sunken, my lady. It looks like you could use a protein infusion. <laughs> All damage you've taken from any one source is added to your life total instead of subtracted from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. She does have kind of a, like a flat face, doesn't she? She's got like a plate face. <laughs> oh, man. They're going to have me running this game in a carnival in hell. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, you got what you wanted. Yes way, Jose. Huh? Huh? Rate this lady, guys. Would bang? Would Come on, y'all would. Who are we kidding? Who are we kidding? Summon her up to reverse the damage on my heart. Just hold me tonight. I know most of the times I want to use your mouth, but tonight I need to use your ears. <laughs> Open your heart to me. We need to reverse the mental scarring. Huh. <laughs> Just pretty good, buddy. Pretty good. This was a fun stream concept for sure, man. We we're definitely gonna keep going with this. The next one, the next one we'll do will be we'll do Arabian Nights. I got to, right? Because this is fun. This is fun. And I like I like that I didn't know everything. Because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real. I was cockier walking into this. I was like, yo. Probably not even going to make any mistakes. I remember all this old shit, but there's tiny little bits that I don't remember, which puts me just enough off my foot where I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. Misspeaking like I did with the Sarah Angel don't count. Uh, but Creature Bond, that was a legit stump. Uh, I got stumped like if this was Hangman, I'd be missing one of my legs. Oh wait, no, Hangman goes in reverse. You kind of build the guy, right? It's been a million years. Every pack is 30th edition. Every pack is Aftermath. Oh, man, I just remembered the tokens because I've got the little token collection list right in front of me. That's dope, man. That's dope. It's so fun, all the random stuff we can do this way. Just whatever, man. This is great. I don't know why I didn't do this before. Jess, you gotta try harder, buddy! But yeah, this is a winning, this is a winning concept. This is a winning concept. This memory game, I mean, obviously it does eventually have diminishing returns, but that's many sets from now. Many sets. 
And it makes it more of a challenge, too. It definitely will become more challenging for me going forward from here. Yeah. Moving into stuff like Ice Age. Ice Age has all kinds of weird, wonky garbage. Stump says, hello. Well, send my regards. Snagging them coins. Oh, uh, Jeremy, you want to talk about shirts? Y'all need to get yourself fine luxury cardboard rectangle shirts. Y'all need to get some fucking Magic Story and merch. You buy it for sports teams. You buy your big fat. I like to finger my team with the fat. I like fat fingering. So get yourself Magic Story and hoodies and shirts and butt. Well, there aren't butt plugs and body pillows yet. But, you know, we'll get there. We'll get there. Bit by bit. Step by step. <clears throat> Mad cow, yeah. That's right. The tokens do look pretty intricate. There's a lot going on with them. They're dope, man. They're dope. Desolator, that's a card from Legends. That's a card from Legends. We're not doing Legends today. One? <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. I guess we'll find out Legends Day. I sh I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure it'll come up. I have a sneaking suspicion on Legends Day that that'll be one of the cards somebody chooses. How could they not? crazy to think that it's been 30 years started playing this game forever ago psychic venom oh somebody likes so weird it's weird that they have the snake on the enchantment right psychic venom's obnoxious one blue and one for an enchant land that says whenever enchanted land becomes tapped, its controller takes two damage. That thing is obnoxious. People would play it with power sinks. Right? Just slow you down. Slow you right down. Really annoying to deal with in Chandelar as well. You gotta tell it not to auto-tap that land or the computer would... Oh, did you want to cast a spell? Well, guess what? You auto-tap the land with the psychic venom on it and you take damage. I always notice the snake. I rarely ever notice the chick's eyes behind it. Get snaked. Stop tapping them lands. Stop tapping them lands. Uh, Jeremy, no, I've never done the Etsy stuff. Uh, Carly's picked up like a doormat and stuff like that off of there, but no, not me. I've, I'm like, I'm old school. Virtually all of my shopping I do in person. I don't do like a lot of online shopping. I have bought some stuff on Amazon and I do have an Amazon gift list that obviously people send stuff to, but like in terms of uh, like a lot of random places, I really haven't done that much online ordering. I am old world. I want to just walk in, buy a thing and leave, but I'm accepting that more and more everything is just happening online. So I am... I'm I'm slowly slowly shifting over. Chess veteran bodyguard. Oh, you like dudes like pirates with big beefcake arms will hold you and protect you, don't you? Veteran bodyguard is two white and three um, eye patch dude. He's got like a sword. I think it might have like short dark hair. All damage that will be dealt to you by unblocked creatures is dealt instead to the veteran bodyguard, but only as long as he's not tapped. What is he? 2-5. Uh, let's see. Uh, unless bodyguards tapped, any damage done to you by unblocked creatures is done to him. You may not take this damage yourself, although you can prevent it if possible. Yeah, so it's just rules explanation. There he is, shirtless guy with short dark hair, the sword. He's got an eye patch. 
two five. Yup. Nailed it. Nailed it. Desolator Splendid Genesis is not an alpha beta unlimited. You can't pick random special commemorative cards created by Richard Garfield to commemorate the birth of one of their children, right? Where it's like four green to cast and you take to the t you take both players decks, shuffle them together and then split them into three decks if I'm not mistaken. I know I am going off course, but you guys like to be a little tease bags, right? So hold on. The artwork oh the artwork shows like um like a blue outline of a child's hand. Maybe in an adult's hand. Uh yep, four green, shuffle all cards in the game game together, divide them into three decks. The game game continues with the new player. There you go. There you go. Uh, it wasn't part of it, but there you go. Toss it in. Toss it in. Jeremy, do I own a 3D printer? I wish, man. 3D printing seems really cool, but also finicky and whatever. So I got one on the Amazon wish list. One day, one day I'll be a 3D printer boy, but not, not today. It'd be cool, actually. I thought to myself, like, I am working on making an insane Magic the Gathering life counter. So I've got this, right? This goes on here. This is the, the spin down life disc from one of those old Reaper models. And I have not, I do not have a cool model to put on top of it. But being able to 3D print one would mean I'd have a much wider variety of options. But yeah, one day that'll turn into an epic magic life counter. So yeah, the Splendid Genesis card, like, there's about maybe 30 of these in the world. And half of them roughly are glued to cardboard squares that were given out as, like, uh, announcements. Like announcements. Oh, man. All right. Well, this has been an excellent stream. I have enjoyed it immensely. So we're going to keep this concept going. The next time we do one of these, we'll do Antiquities. I don't know. It might even be the next, the next stream that I do. We'll see. We'll see. Either way. This was fun. So thanks, guys. You did a fantastic job of coming up with tons of suggestions of cards to talk about. I got, I got fully stumped. I got partially stumped, and I also even teased you with some tongue-tied unstumpitude. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for coming and hanging out, but unfortunately, my life force is, is running out now. So, I die and fall into the pool of death. Goodbye.